right, here we go. Episode two of our Massive Darkness 2 painting series. We're painting Urk the Shaman. Pretty easy, nothing too crazy. Uh, there's not a lot to this miniature, so we're trying to just make it as nice as possible without going overboard. First off, as always, I want to thank the YouTube members. You guys are awesome. I can't thank you enough for your guys' help and donations for making this channel possible. You guys rock. Uh, if this is your first time at the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up, hit that bell, hit that like. We're going to be doing a ton of stuff. And I'm not stopping because I love doing this and I love having all the comments left, people sending me pictures. That's what I live for. But without further ado, let's go. All right, obviously the first thing you're gonna do is scrape off those mold lines. Now these are your basic cool mini or not miniatures. They're decent, they're not the best, but they're not the worst. So they have some mold lines on them. After you're done scraping everything off, get some old spray can caps and put some sticky tack on them and place your miniatures on them. And I'm using an airbrush because we are using an airbrush. You don't necessarily need it for this miniature, but I am. And we're spraying them all with black primer. The first thing we're going to do is all the green stuff on this because I'm going to be using an airbrush. You're going to understand why here in a minute because I'm going to be spraying this thing after I've got all my base colors down. So we're going to go over all of our wings, antennae, arms, the carapace, I guess you could say, on our shaman with warpstone glow. You're also probably noticing that this takes about two, maybe three coats. Once you put a coat on, let it completely dry, put another one on. If you need a third one, do a third coat as well. Next, we're gonna use some Beel Tan Green to kind of make that recesses of our miniature stand out just a little bit. Let that dry completely. Once you're satisfied and it is completely dry, hit those raised areas in the center and along the edges with that warpstone glow again. Next, take a 50-50 mix of warmstone glow and striking green and start working on all of our raised areas. We do not want to get in the recesses of this. We just want to merely get in the top most raised areas, specifically on the areas of green that are by the lower portion of the body. You want to really hit those and get those. Those are probably going to be our focal point of our miniature while we're looking at it besides the face. Going over those same areas, we're going to be using some strack and green. Again, we're kind of building up those colors in the middle of the areas by the waist. Next, we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Strachan Green and Dorn Yellow, and we're really going to focus on those middle areas on the waist and portions of the antenna just a little bit. We're not overdoing it here. We're just kind of making some nice brighter colors, and it'll all be blended in once we use our airbrush or, if you're not using airbrush, painting on our green metallic. And for a final highlight before our green step, we're going to take some Dorn Yellow, and we're going to hit really those little middle areas and the top portions of our antennae and a little bit on the arms as well. And just for extra good luck, if we want to, take a little bit of ivory and just put a little bit in the middle of each of those highly yellow areas. Not too much, just a little bit. And 
Now to blend them all together, we're going to take an airbrush and we're going to take some Gordian Knot. It's a metallic green from Turbo Dork, which are fantastic. I'm a big fan. And we're going to spray that entire area. Uh, the reason we're doing this first is because it obviously is going to get all over the black portion of the face and the other white portion, so we're doing this first. And once you're done, it should look a little bit like this. Very blended in. And for the final step, I'm telling you, this isn't a very long video, we're going to take some ivory and we're going to paint over the rest of this. Now we're focusing on all the wings, bottom portion of our shaman, and the face of our shaman. This is probably going to take about three coats, so do a coat, let it dry completely, do another coat, let it dry completely, and do a third coat. The face took probably about four coats. That black really wanted to stick through, so it took a little bit longer than I anticipated. For our sword, we're just going to use some basic Iron Hands steel, and for the hilt portion of our sword or the handle, we're going to be using some Retributor armor. For a little bit of the hands, and there's a little piece of blue that's sticking out underneath the mouth of our shaman. We're just going to be using some Thousand Suns Blue just to kind of match the card art a little bit. For our eyes, we're going to be using some Abaddon Black. Take your time on this. I'm using a size 10-1 brush or 10-0 brush, a very tiny brush. Once you're satisfied with your eyes, take a little bit of ivory, just a tiny, tiny bit to get it on the very tip of your brush and make a little white dot on the left side of each eye. That's just kind of the glare that we're working with. And to make them glossy, we're going to use some Art Coat from Citadel, which is a technical paint, and it's going to make them nice and glossy. Then we're going to make our wash for the ivory, and we're going to be doing two parts of Lamia Medium to one part of Agrax Earth Shade. Now we're going to use this wash all over the wings and the bottom portion of the ivory. We are not using this on our head at all. Do not use any of this on the head of our shaman. And while you're letting this dry, head over to our Instagram, nerd.nights, where we're always posting what's coming up and what we're doing so you don't miss out on there either. Uh, we also want to get this on the hilt and our sword as well. After it's completely dry, we're going to take some ivory and we're really just hitting in some of the areas. We're not going to go over all of it. We're just getting in a lot of those areas. We're not going into the recesses. We're getting a lot of the raised areas. We're just making that colorization from the kind of eggshell to the ivory. That's all we're doing. For the hilt, we're going to take some Liberator Gold and just kind of brighten that up a little bit. And then for the sword, we're going to take some Iron Breaker and just brighten up that sword just a little bit. And your favorite part of painting this miniature, the base, Abaddon Black, because that means it's done. And like I said, it wasn't a whole lot, but it turned out pretty decent, and that green is really the focal point of our miniature, as you can see here, and I'm sure you did just the same as I did. Um, and you didn't need to use an airbrush on that green, but if you really wanted to, you could have. Like I did, it just saves time. That's why I love an airbrush, because it saves a ton of time. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all my YouTube members. Thank you for all of my subscribers. You guys are awesome. You're the reason I do it. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment below what you want to see painted next in the Massive Darkness series. I like to take requests, so hit me up. Until next time, paint on.